speak told an audience, I think Tanai was there, that he practiced his champion speech, speech hundreds of times, often more than 20 times to the same Toastmaster Club. How exciting. <laughs> Ryan knows that good speaking <laughs> is re-speaking. Ken too knows that good speaking is re-speaking, but rather than subject you to hundreds of versions of his speeches, or even 25 versions, which I personally don't mind, today <laughs> he will present to you only the third version of a speech, now called Just to Remind You. Have you ever been so involved in an event you're organizing that you forgot to do something really important? Maybe you, Amy, in an event, you forgot to do something really important. Something that may even have hurt somebody? Well, that happened to me. And I learned a lesson from that event that you might find useful yourself when you hear about it later. The event was my son's bar mitzvah. You may know a bar mitzvah is a Jewish ceremony celebrating the coming of age of a 13-year-old boy and he becomes a man. And for this special occasion, I'd asked my father if he would like to say a few words. Now my father was a man about my height, a little bigger than me, comfortable making speeches. And he said, Ken, yeah, I'll, I'll put something together. I'll write something up, and I'll be ready to give it. Once he agreed, I knew that was taken care of. But had you been there, at the bar mitzvah, <coughs> you would have seen a really chaotic event. The reason being that it was a reform bar mitzvah. That is a very liberal kind of Jewish ceremony because my wife, now my ex-wife, but my wife at the time is Asian, not Jewish. She's a small, very small Vietnamese woman who really got into the party aspect of the bar mitzvah. So that day, we had the ceremony, and then we had things happening, part of a party, cutting bread, some more ceremony, people coming up to us saying, hello, hi, Ken, hi, how are you? And it was chaos. It didn't follow the normal procedure because it was a reform, kind of do-it-yourself bar At the end of the day, we had a special bar mitzvah meal at a Chinese restaurant. A little different. <laughs> Big banquet, round table. I was busy running around sending people here, you sit here, you sit there. How are you? How are you doing? How busy, 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 busy. At the end of the night, after all the people left, just myself, my son, my wife, and my father were left, I suddenly realized, Dad, I didn't ask you to speak. And you know, you can tell from a person's face when they're hurt. You just see it in their eyes. He was hurt. I had forgotten to ask him. I felt horrible. I forgot to ask my dad to say these special words on the occasion. I said, Dad, how come you didn't remind me? Mainly to ease my own pain, because I felt so bad. Why didn't you remind me? say anything. Now who knows why he didn't remind me. Maybe he was so hurt he couldn't even bring himself to say something. Maybe he felt it must not be important to me because I couldn't remember. Maybe he got shy. I don't know, but he didn't remind me. The result was he was hurt. I felt terrible. And my son never got to hear what his grandfather was going to say on that special occasion. I've been so busy, completely forgot to ask him, and he was hurt, and I was hurt, and my son missed out on an opportunity. So what I learned for myself, and perhaps you'll find useful too, is you're ever in a situation where someone has asked you to speak, or someone has asked you to do something, and it's so busy, 
that that host begins to ask you, you owe it, first of all, to the people who want to hear what you have to say. You owe it to the host who might have forgotten to relieve his pain. You owe it to yourself to say the things you want to say by speaking up. So all you have to do is go to that host and just remind them. Great job. Thanks, Amy. I just had the letter.